Hello everybody, and welcome back to Space Engine. It's been some time, so I figured I'd do another one, because, well, the ride never ends. Uh, where we left off with this temperate Oceana with life. And I had some people ask me to go back to Earth and whatnot, and look at the various planets there, just because they want to look at the uh, terrain and whatnot. The terrain generation, so I figured, okay, why not? That's a lot of fun. Let's fly back to Earth. Yay! Wow, we were quite a ways out, weren't we? And we're almost there. There's Sol, and boom. Alright. Looking at our really pretty planet, I am... Let's orient myself north to south. Boop. Alright. We have Australia, because everyone loves the Aussies. I do anyway, isn't it? Awesome people. Uh, China, India, Middle East, Africa, South America, North America. Well, let's mix things up by landing. Let's uh, let's bother the Europeans, shall we? Okay, this rate's gonna be like the Eastern Europeans because I'm gonna be very close to the Terminator. Uh, whoa. Okay, let's not do that. All right, now let's slow down time, because someone asked me if um, they wanted to see if buildings spawned and all that, which uh, they 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 don't. It's like um, the terrain looks really pretty on other planets because it fractally generates and it can do all at once, but uh, the mapping on actual known planets such as the Earth and whatnot is really not that nice looking. Uh, yeah, the terrain does not look all that pretty here on Earth. Let's go across the ocean to North America. Er, wait, no. North America was at night. We should be flying towards... Oh, we were flying over uh, a sea. But yeah, so, yeah, the terrain on Earth does not look that nice. It, it really doesn't. Where's the moon? Is that the moon? No, that's Jupiter. There's the moon. So let's go to the moon. I'm a huge fan of the moon. Luna. I suppose you can call it, because uh, it isn't the only moon in the solar system. It's just our moon. Earth's moon's best moon. Actually, that's not true. My favorite moon is uh, Titan, because Titan's amazing, because it has such amazing organic uh, chemistry. I've already gotten them. I've already had that topic. Oh, okay. It's quite dark. Let's land on one of these craters. I was, was going to bother uh, Copernicus Crater, but I guess it's in the dark, so let's, let's go on the edge here. I wonder if I can find Scaparelli Crater. Actually, I probably wouldn't be able to recognize it after all of this. Yeah, the uh, terrain on the moon also doesn't look that great. It looks better than on Earth, but not not that great. It's very unfortunate. But the moon aside, let's stop in some of my favorite planets. That's Mercury. I'm gonna Venus. I like Venus. Venus is cool. Oh, oy vey. Sorry, it's kind of late. Stretch. Been busy all day. Hmm, what was I gonna talk about? Oh, right. <laughs> uh, I'm sure a lot of you may know, there are crazy people on the internet. Lots of them. It's just, a it's just you know, when you have the internet, you're going to have uh, information from everybody, and that includes people who uh, are quite the characters. Ah, I crashed on Venus. It's very, very bright. A little bit too bright here in this cloud layer. But I can't go any lower. Ah, uh, this sucks. Anyways, and, uh, you know, one of the one of my favorite group of class of people I see on the internet are the conspiracy theorists. They're just really funny. But, uh, there's one group that a lot of people know of, but don't really get the joke, is the Flat Earth Society. It's that, um, the Flat Earth Society is mostly satire. Like, very, very few people legitimately believe the Earth is flat. 
<laughs> but a lot of people like see the uh, fighter society and like you know wow this is like this is really funny and it's like well that's the point it's satire it's like uh, I know like the Canadian fighter society for the longest time there they were openly satirical but uh, they used that concept to kind of like it was like an example of like not believing everything you read on the internet kind of thing and uh, they actually did a pretty good job but it's just like um, a lot of these people who are like you know oh the fighter society like these people are stupid it's like well they might be very well but the, the thing is most of them are don't actually believe it it's just satire because it's amusing to pretend to believe the earth is flat now there are those who actually do legitimately believe the earth is flat and uh, a lot of them have mental illnesses that make them susceptible to uh, paranoia and whatnot. so I, it's not nice to make fun of them you know, suffering from mental illness myself, I know it's not fun to make fun of someone who suffers from that. Granted, I don't have paranoia or whatever, I just have anxiety, but whatever. Same kind of... Th <laughs> similar thing. It's all about the brain. You got Jupiter. I like Jupiter. And that's a shadow from... Uh, I think whoever this... Oh wait, or is it this? It's one of these moons. Probably not this one, though. Yeah, no, that's too small. It's gonna be one of the larger moons. Amalfia. No, it isn't Amalfia. It might be Europa. Well, it depends. Whose shadow is where? I don't know, unless that is the actual moon right there. No, that's definitely a shadow of some kind. But anyways, yeah, it's like, um, arguing with some of these people, it's like, there's no point in arguing with them, because you're basically arguing with someone who doesn't actually believe what they're talking about. But uh, it, it can be quite amusing. I think one of my favorite conspiracy theorists that I've, or conspiracy theories that I've found, is uh, there's this fellow. He believes the moon is a hologram of some kind, and that it isn't real. Which sounds pretty normal, you know, conspiracy theorists believe stuff like that. But what really makes it funny is that his reasoning behind it is that when he views it with his camera, sometimes he sees uh, like a wave move through the moon from top to bottom. And uh, it only works with his camera, he says, and nobody else's. And it's really funny because he doesn't understand that what he's seeing isn't a holographic moon. What he's seeing is a, uh, what do you call it? It's like a framing delay in the in, in the camera lens itself. Because like, or a scanning delay. Because like cameras, they scan uh, either side to side or up and down. And sometimes uh, there can be a glitch or whatever which causes the scanning to be uh, noticeable especially in older cameras, or, like, digital cameras anyways, uh, or one that has something that's wrong with it. It's like, basically this guy, his, his, only, his only evidence that the moon's a hologram is based on his own faulty camera and his, his ability to not understand how cameras work, digital cameras work. And uh, it's really funny, but it's also very sad, because then he pulls into the whole Jewish conspiracies and the New World Order and other uh, bullshit conspiracies that have no validity whatsoever. But it's still amusing, some of this stuff. Or this, this one person I once saw, uh, he makes videos. He says the moon is like five or six times bigger than the Earth. And it crashes into the Earth sometimes. Just because if you look at the Earth, like pictures of Earth, there are like these spiral clouds, which look like, you know, oh, it looks like the moon crashes into the Earth and makes these spiral clouds because he doesn't understand weather patterns. It's just like there's a lot of really interesting people uh, on the internet. And it's, you have to remember, it's like, some of them are legit, and some of them are just satire. I like Europa. I like Europa. But uh, I still find it kind of amusing. There's this one fellow um, who was on one, of my, on one of my videos complaining. He was complaining about how ev why evolution isn't real, and uh, he gave no solid, or actually he gave no valid uh, evidence or reasons whatsoever. Something seems, it seems a little bright, don't you think? Uh, how do I turn down the lighting? That's time scale. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. I should wait. I turn on auto exposure, can't I? Uh, settings. Either way, and it was just like, it was really, really amusing. Because uh, he, like, you know, I just, <laughs> I'll, like, I'll let anyone say what they want in my videos as long as it's not hate speech because I'm all about um, freedom of speech. So I let him do what he wanted to do. But it was just really interesting watching this person adamantly talk about how, um, uh, I think I already have it on. How like evolution isn't real, 
and that he has all this evidence that why it's not, but he failed to give any of it, and he couldn't actually explain any of the actual evidence for evolution, and just brushed it off as not being real, as conspiracy theorists do, which then brings up to the topic or the point never to argue with a conspiracy theorist, because you can never win. Uh, it's like if arguing or if discussing is a game, uh, you have to set by you have to you know abide by rules. There's a bug on my hand. What kind of bug is that? Uh, it's a little tiny spider. You're lost, buddy. Here, let me put you somewhere where you won't get crushed. Or, <laughs> anyways, it's like you um, there are rules you have to abide by, such as the, you know reality and uh, evidence. Especially when you're discussing something, you have to have sources and you have to back up your claims. With con oh, wrong button. With conspiracy theorists, you can't do any of that because the minute you offer information that contradicts them, they will just say that that information is wrong and they'll change the rules to suit them. So there's no point arguing because no matter how many points of evidence you give, uh, you will never win because they will just say that it's wrong because you can just that that's the joy of the human brain. You can just discount anything and say, oh, it's not real because, and then give a stupid example, but that's totally valid to the person who's giving the, uh, the excuse. So it's just, it was really amusing to see. Uh, I, I love seeing people argue on my, on my, <laughs> I know this is terrible, but I love watching people argue amongst themselves on my, uh, in the comments of my videos because I can, I get to see, um, people interact with, like, you have people who do back up their ideas and stuff and they have to, and they're arguing with people who will, you can't win an argument with because they change the rules to suit to suit them, and it's it's human psychology. It's amusing. Uh, Pluto has a bit of an atmosphere here. I guess that's that that's accurate. On that note, New Horizons is gonna swing by Pluto in. Oh, I think it's I think I think we're, I think we're down to like ten or seven days now, or ten days. Soon, it's within ten days. Go oh, see here. They had a glitch. Yeah, it's about seven days, and I am so looking forward to it. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, New Horizons was a probe launched in 2006 to go to Pluto, and it's going to swing by Pluto and Charon and carry on into the Kuiper Belt. I've been watching it for <laughs> 10 years since it was launched, and I've been, like, paying attention to it, and I, I watched its Jupiter flyby and all that, and, like, I'm really big into it, so uh, in a few more days, 10 years of flight is finally going to make it come to Pluto, and it's going to swing by, and we're going to get our first close-up images of the Pluto-Charon Hydra... Type, like oh, this this whole system. Uh, Cerberus, yeah, there we go. There's a whole bunch of them. Cerberus, Hydra, Nix, and there's one down here, which I missed. Uh, Sticks, yeah, it's like it's gonna be really cool. I am so looking forward to it. Oh, let's go around here. Where was I gonna go? Uh, I don't know. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go to the Pleiades. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, but yeah, so. Pluto's pretty cool. Conspiracy theorists are amusing. Actually, I made some comment. There was a video some guy made um, on this channel where it was like he had a balloon or a camera on a balloon. He's like, look, you can't see the curvature of the Earth because like, it's flat. And the video is, well, his entire channel. I, I'm, I'm actually a little confused because I want to say it's satire, but he's pretty determined, so it might he might actually believe what he what he believes. But he's actually a fairly nice person, so I'm not gonna. Um, say he's bad or anything because he was actually very polite but I just made some comment where it's like people don't understand the uh, the satire and some people will comment and you can tell that they're just going along with the joke because of how they're how they talk and then and there's th those people who honestly believe the earth is flat and that government's lying to us because perpetuating a round earth is apparently something that helps governments do something they're no the conspiracy theorists are not they don't go into details because they it would, it would make their uh, ideas really stupid but I don't know it's, it's, it's really funny especially this one um, their biggest arguments are that satellites and that the ISS aren't real and that they're just conspiracies but they don't understand that anyone with a telescope can look at the ISS as it flies overhead and you can actually see it uh, I've done it a few times my dad's the president at well, he was the president at the Astronomy Club in Lethbridge, Alberta. He's currently the president of the Astronomy Club in Medicine Hat, Alberta now. But anyways, it's like, um, what you do is like you wait for, you wait until it flies overhead, which may take a few months or a few weeks until it does that. 
and then you basically just set up um, like if you like you can get all this information on NASA's website if you're, like there's tracking stuff and then you basically just watch it um, go overhead it's, it's easier with a telescope that has a, that has a um, like a motor and stuff and you can actually track it but it's it's really cool because you can actually see it fly overhead and if you have a good uh, telescope or even a crappy one really if you just um, uh, focus it right you can actually see the uh, the solar panels and the modules and as it flies overhead and it's it's really cool actually so anyway so you have these conspiracy theorists who say it's like you know oh the space station's a lie because you know have you seen it with your own eyes and I can actually say yes I have and then they always like they I have when, every time I bring up that I've seen the space station with my own eyes through my own telescope they always seem to either stop talking or they change the topic because again these conspiracy theorists are always big into you know look at the stuff with your own eyes and then when you actually do like you actually see something with your own eyes that contradicts them they just want to brush under the rug or ignore it or say that you're lying and it's just it's really really amusing or like you know how do you tell the earth is round it's like oh but that it's like that's been known for thousands of years it's like the concept of a uh, a flat earth actually wasn't all that common uh, in antiquity uh, well, actually, it depends where you were. Uh, a lot of ancient Egyptian scho- or a lot of ancient Chinese scholars thought the world was f- flat, but once evidence filtered in from uh, the more, like from the Middle Eastern and Western areas, they realized, okay, no, it's not. But it's like even as far back as the ancient Greek Greek times, or even before that, um, the concept that, that the Earth was either a dome or a sphere was very well known because of very, very simple experiments that could be done. Oop, it has life. That can be done. Like, there was one, I always forget his name, but a uh, long time ago, he noticed that in Alexandria, like the city of Alexandria, and this one town uh, that's like, it was like a hundred and something kilometers away from Alexandria, but he found that at, um, Uh, the solstice, there we go. In the town, uh, the, su- the sun would be right overhead, and the slight light would shine straight down uh, this well and not be interrupted by the... Uh, oops, I hit the wrong buttons. And would not be interrupted by uh, the, the walls. But then he found that at the exact same time in Alexandria, observations shown that the sun actually didn't shine all the way down a well there and shone just a bit to the, you know, kind of off to one side. So he kind of took this and he ran with it, and he put up two sticks in each side or in, in each um, in each city, and he paid a person to uh, pace off, um, like how far it was. So he knew for sure, and then he had someone. Uh, he watched one of the sticks, and somebody watched the other, and then at the at the same time at uh, during solstice, he had them. He had, he measured his the shadow length on his stick and the shadow length, and he had the other guy measure the shadow length on the other stick. And they found that there was a uh, that they were off, and then you can use basic trigonometry uh, to calculate the circumference of the Earth. And he did, and it was actually fairly accurate considering um, the data he used. It wasn't perfect, mind you, but it was fairly accurate. And experiments like this have been done all the time. Like lots of ancient cultures would do stuff like this. It's like they weren't stupid. Um, some of the like some of the most detailed astronomical observations came out of um oh came out of like the Islamic world uh way back in the day or in um the ancient Mayans were also really good at astronomical observations so like these people weren't stupid you know they they knew stuff like they like they knew uh the motion of the planets they can calculate the motion of the planets very very precisely uh, they knew the shape of the Earth, and they even knew the size of the Earth in some cases because you can same basic math. You can actually calculate its size, and it's it's like the concept of a flat Earth didn't actually become very popular until about nineteen the nineteen fifties, when some crazy guy in the states started. He developed the first flat Earth society, and it kind of went from there. But it's like I don't know. It's like in antiquity, the uh, concept of, of a flat Earth was not very it was not accepted widely because it went against um, basic observation. There's lava here, or at least hot rock. And even like early, like, like there's other experiments that have been done. Um, there's just one. It was like the something riverbed level experiments. God, I w- I'm terrible with names, but same kind of thing. There was a riverbed that was, well, 
perfectly flat, I suppose, very, very flat for about six miles, which, how many kilometers is that? A lot. And, uh, they set up three sticks at equal distances, like six, or uh, at equal distances away from each other. And, uh, you had on one side, you had a telescope that measured, that would, like, look over the other two sticks. And, uh, they found that no matter where you do this on flat terrain, you know, the sticks, the farther away the stick is, it'll always be shorter than it should be by, uh, like observationally anyways, by a few, like a few inches even. And it's because the Earth is, it's round, so of course it would, things would appear to be lower down the farther away they are because of the curvature of the Earth. There's even um, bridges, a number of large bridges that have to be offset by a few millimeters, or have to be offset by a few uh, centimeters just be, uh, just to account for the um, the curvature of the Earth, and it's 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 really cool actually. Like, I love this kind of, this kind of stuff. Also, the shadow of the shadow of the, the Earth's shadow on the Moon is round, and the Moon is round, and the planets are round, and you can see those with your naked with, you can see those with your eyes without any government interference. And the basic laws of physics would not permit a uh, a flat world of Earth's mass. Actually, could you even get a uh, a flat world at all? That's a good question. With a smaller asteroid, I suspect yes, you could get a a pancake world, but it would have to be a fairly small asteroid. Because um, like again, gravity pulls everything to the center of mass. So the bigger an object, the more uh, pull there's going to be toward the center of mass. Which is why large objects uh, tend to become round. It's like you, uh, like you you look at the asteroid belt. A lot of the asteroids are oblongs and potato shapes and all that. But then you get to larger asteroids like C like um, Cirrus, and it's round. And then you go even more big, and of course they get round because it's just a sphere is just it's 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 the default shape for a massive object because gravity pulls everything to the center of the mass equally. Therefore, you would get a sphere just because of that. So again, but but of course, these people believe that gravity isn't real, and that apparent gravity is like the Earth, the disk of the Earth accelerating up at like some dumb number. Of again, it's like all these like the more evidence you pour that the Earth is round, the more these people have to make up uh, bullshit to show that the Earth is flat, and it just becomes so convoluted. But then you have to remember that a lot of them aren't actually serious, and that it's mostly the satire, and then it stops being, oh my goodness, oh wait, at the star I'm already at. And then it becomes less, uh, less annoying. I think that spider bit me. I have a bit of an itch on my hand now. Little bastard. It was a very, very, very tiny spider, though. But, uh, yeah, it's like, these people tell you, you know, go look at the stuff with your own eyes. Have you seen it? It's like, yes, actually, yes, I have. I have seen the space station. I can confirm it is in fact in space. I have seen it with my telescope a couple of times actually. Uh, not recently, mind you. I think the last time I saw it was uh, four years ago. But still, it's like I, I, I have in fact seen it. I've also seen uh, a lot of well, I say satellites, but again, you can't really resolve much detail with them with the telescope because they're pretty damn small. But you can, you can, you can, with the naked eye, you can see them flying overhead, just like little dots. And they correspond perfectly with, um, usually like, 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 like with the satellite trackers. Actually, my brother had a friend, or not a friend, but a schoolmate, I should say, in grade 7 or 8, who thought that all the stars you see in the sky were, uh, space junk. And it's like, that doesn't make any sense at all, but whatever, I'll let you, uh, keep that idea to, you know, what, what you're doing. Oh, man. Yeah, binary. It's just, it's really amusing, a lot of these people. But again, I, th I don't think any conspiracy can beat the one that all the world leaders are, like, lizard people from space, or whatever the, it is. I don't know, it's, it's really dumb, but it's really amusing. But people s actually believe this, but there's actually a theory as to why uh, conspiracies are so prevalent in some people, and it comes down to human psychology. It's like, you know, like the little government conspiracies, those are one thing, but the, like the global conspiracies, like the Illuminati and whatnot, there's actually an idea that the reason why so many people believe in this is just because the human brain f like naturally finds it very hard to uh, comprehend um, like just uh, it, has the, it has the inability to comprehend um, evil essentially oh I think I broke the game no there we go 
like it has the, like uh, to co like to comprehend just um, malice for the sake of malice, like pure evil. So when something bad happens, like a uh, a large terrorist attack, or a um, something that involves a large loss of life due to a person's actions, uh, a lot of people will jump to the or not a lot, but some people will jump to the idea that it's a conspiracy because it makes more sense for something like that to happen with intent as opposed to having ha having it happen just because of pure evil because the human brain seems to be uh, wired to not really understand or comprehend um, the, like just to comprehend just evil and malice so that's why when you have major incidents you have people who believe it's some kind of global conspiracy because it gives psychologically it gives them uh, meaning for why this happened like it, this happened for a reason therefore it can be understood now, in most people, uh, this concept that, like, our brains can't really comprehend malice, um, not, really com not, not, not that it can't comprehend it, but it can't comprehend uh, malice for the sake of, like, just pure evil. But, like, with a lot of people, again, we can, um, like, this, this idea is pretty, pretty low-key, and it's not that big of a deal. Like, our brains can pretty much overlook it, it doesn't matter. But some people, for some whatever reason, they just don't have, like, this concept is a lot more taxing on their brains. They start developing conspiracies, and if they already have pre-existing conditions that make them susceptible to paranoia, that also feeds on it. But it's very interesting to see that the reason why so many of these conspiracies are prevalent is because of this idea that um, our brains are hardwired to believe in conspiracies to try to make sense of the world. It's kind of like why, or I should say, uh, the, the the psychological explanation for religion. Not to start any fights, but there's also some um, some thoughts that the concept of higher powers and gods evolved in, in our brains to help us cope with the concept of death and to help us basically not go insane when we develop sentience. Because like most animals, if they don't like if they're not self-aware, they don't care. They can be conscious of the world, but they don't really they don't they can't comprehend stuff outside of themselves really like they, they can't comprehend the concept of death or whatever but once you become sapient like we are and possibly dolphins and possibly elephants because they do well they're very self-aware i don't know if they're sapient technically but sticking with humans anyways it's like when you have sapients we have the ability to um, actually think about death and the concept of what happens after you die so there's just some thoughts that um religion or the concept that we, you know, a lot of people feel the need to have a higher power in their life, uh, springs back to when we first developed, sent, uh, or like way, way, way when we first became sapient, and uh, our brains had to have a mechanism in place to keep us from having existential crises and going insane. <laughs> Which, like, believe in a god or not, I don't care, freedom of religion, but I personally find that idea actually more comforting than the concept of a god itself, just because it's like it's the reason why some people believe in religion is because it's an evolutionary adaptation that just keeps us it keeps us together, it keeps our brains together. It's like I, again, I don't mind religious people. A lot, most of them are actually very nice people. It's like if you believe in a god, that's fine. If it helps you, then it actually is doing good because it's doing good for you. I just, I personally just don't believe in a god of any kind, but whatever. Which made my dad a little sad, but then again, he's an ex-minister and still goes to a Baptist church. I got to the pushing escape and still goes to a Baptist church, so of course he'd be upset with that. But he's cool. I like him. Um, where am I going now? Let's go somewhere else. Actually, it is almost 30 minutes. I should probably end this soon. But I like rambling about stuff. <sighs> actually, if you do put a camera on a balloon and you get above 30 miles, you actually, or 40 something, you actually can see the curvature of the earth. It's it's not that hard, but of course in the video the camera didn't actually get that high, but whatever. The curvature of the Earth is actually very, fairly easily... Actually, whenever I see people who are like, you know, oh, send a camera to the edge of space, it's like, you're not actually going anywhere near the edge of space. It's like the max altitude for a weather balloon is maybe 45 miles. Or is it kilometers? Either way, it's nowhere, it's not even halfway to the edge of space. Because, like, um, yeah, it's 45 kilometers. That's right, because 
the edge of space is 100 kilometers. That's the Kármán line. That's when uh, space officially begins. So you can send a camera up to 40 kilometers, but not to 100, because the balloon can't reach that high. So you don't actually get to the edge of space. You just get to the, uh, the stratosphere. So you, you do get above most of the atmosphere, but you do not get to space. Whoa. I'm hoping to get to space. Suborbital. Pretty fun. You just go straight up, straight down. But that's for uh, another video and another project and probably 10 years. But uh, anyways, I think I should end this here now because 30 minutes, I... whatever. So yeah, uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and space.